This image shows a world map, the seven continents, Asia, Australia, North and South America, Africa, Europe, and Antarctica can be seen if you look closely. This wasn't always the case, however. The seven continents of Earth did not exist around 300 million years ago. Instead, it was composed of Pangaea, a huge supercontinent surrounded by the Pantalesa Ocean. Pangaea was the only continent on Earth until about 200 million years ago, during the Triassic period. Then it started to fragment, and Pangaea was divided into two new continents, Laurasia and Gondwana Land, during the Triassic period. Gondwana Land, the larger of the two, is split into South America, Africa, Australia, Antarctica, the Indian subcontinent, and the Arabian Peninsula, which together make up approximately two-thirds of the current continent. The smaller continent, Laurasia moved north and eventually broke up into what we now call Europe, Asia, and North America. Many people are unaware that Gondwana Land is also split into another half, which it took scientists 375 years to discover and which eventually became the eighth continent on the globe. This portion had been waiting for them beneath the water all this time. How did this continent change from its original state, and how long has it been underwater? Join us as we uncover scientists' bizarre new finding of a submerged continent. In 1642, Abel Tasman went on a mission. A Dutch sailor with a lot of experience was determined to find the big continent he was sure was in the southern hemisphere. In order to balance out their own continent in the north, the Europeans were certain that there must be a huge landmass there which they dubbed Terra Australis in advance. This part of the Earth was still a mystery to them at the time. Since the time of the ancient Romans, the fixation has been there, but it has only now been put to the test. So, on August 14th, Tasman set off in two little ships from the Indonesian port of Jakarta and traveled west, south, and east until he reached the South Island of New Zealand. When he first saw the Maori residents who were said to have arrived in the region hundreds of years earlier, it was not a pleasant beginning for him. On the second day, several of them departed in a canoe and crashed into a little boat that was ferrying communications between the Dutch ships. Four Europeans were among the dead. The fate of the European targets remains unclear after they fired a cannon at 11 further boats. The expedition came to a halt at that point. Without having ever set foot on this new continent, Tasman gave the terrible location the ironic name, Murderer's Bay, and sailed home a few weeks later. Although he believed that he had located the vast southern continent, it was certainly not an excellent place for trade. He never returned. Australia had already been found at this time, but the Europeans changed their minds and gave it the name Terra Australis since they then think it was the fabled continent they were seeking. Tasman was unaware that he had been right all along. A continent was missing. Geologists made news when they announced the finding of Zealandia, 1.89 million square miles or nearly six times the size of Madagascar make up this region, 4.9 million square kilometers. Although encyclopedias, maps, and search engines have long maintained that there are only seven continents, the team asserted boldly that there are more than seven. There are really eight of them, as we can now see, and the most recent one is the tiniest, thinnest, and youngest continent ever. A tiny number of islands, notably New Zealand, pertude to the ocean's depths throughout, contributing for 94% of it. It had been lurking in plain sight, but that was only the beginning. Five years later, the continent remains a mystery. The secrets are fiercely guarded behind a depth of 6,560 feet or 2 kilometers. When the continent was finally made known to the world, one of the biggest maritime domains in history was released. Minor Australian territories that are located on the continent, in addition to New Zealand, are Lord Howe Island, Bull's Pyramid, and New Caledonia, a French colony with an island with lovely lagoons. According to one 18th century explorer, the latter didn't seem to be much bigger than a canoe. Gondwana, a supercontinent that originally encompassed the whole southern hemisphere and originated around 550 million years ago, apparently included Zealandia. It bordered a number of other nations, including all of eastern Australia and part of West Antarctica, and was situated in a corner on the eastern side. Experts claim that Zealandia started to be torn apart some 105 million years ago as a result of a process that we still don't completely comprehend. 
Continental crust is often around 40 kilometers deep as opposed to oceanic crust, which is normally about 10 kilometers thick. The Atlantic was so stretched by the stress that its crust is now just 20 kilometers, 12.4 miles deep. Even though it wasn't as thick as most oceanic crust, the paper-thin continent slowly sank beneath the surface of the water. Elandia is narrow and underwater. Yet geologists nonetheless classify it as a continent because of the kinds of rocks that may be present there. There is still a lot of ambiguity. However, basalt is more commonly found in the ocean bottom, whereas igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary rocks such as granite schist and limestone are frequently found in the continental crust. Geologists find the eighth continent to be very intriguing and somewhat mysterious owing to its unusual origins. For example, no one knows how the very thin continent of Zealand was able to stay together and not break up into a bunch of small continents. When precisely Zealand is sank, and if dry land ever existed, there are additional unanswered questions. The Australian and Pacific tectonic plates clash to form the ridges that are now above sea level. This raised the issue of what lived there. The continent of Gondwana itself supported a wide variety of plants and animals, including the earliest four-legged land animals and, subsequently, a profusion of titanosaurs, the biggest animals to ever exist. Could their preserved remnants be dispersed among the wrecks of Zealandia, which had a warm temperature in a range of 39 million square miles, 101 million square kilometers? In the 1990s, fossilized remnants of many terrestrial creatures, including the rib bone of a large, long-tailed, long-necked dinosaur called a sauropod, a beaky herbivorous dinosaur called a hypsiphalodon, and an armed dinosaur called ankyloser were found in New Zealand. It is rare to find fossilized terrestrial animals in the Southern Hemisphere. Then, in 2006, a large predator's footbound, possibly an Allosaurus species, was discovered around 500 miles, 800 kilometers east of the South Island. It's significant to note that all of the fossils were produced after Zealandia broke apart from Gondwana. These islands may have provided centuries of service when Zealandia as a whole was submerged. This does not necessarily mean that dinosaurs were roaming across much of Zealandia. There is much debate about whether it is possible to have land animals without continuous land and if they would have died without it. According to Rupert Sutherland, a professor of geophysics and tectonics at Victoria University of Wellington, one of New Zealand's oddest and most adored birds is the kiwi. It is a bird with hair-like feathers and whiskers. The narrative becomes more intricate as a result. Interestingly, the mower, which belonged to the same group as it does and lived on the same island until it died out 500 years ago, is not considered its closest cousin. The much bigger elephant bird, which prowled Madagascar's wood until 800 years ago, is thought to be its closest cousin, according to experts. Because of this discovery, scientists now think that both birds came from a single ancestor that lived on Gondwana. In Arabian Peninsula, the Indian subcontinent, Australia, South America, Africa, Madagascar, and Zealandia were all formed from the fragments that remained after it entirely disintegrated 130 million years ago. With the exception of the fact that the whole continent, and maybe even all of New Zealand, is thought to have been submerged about 25 million years ago, this means that at least a part of what is now submerged, Zealandia may have always been above water. It was believed that all creatures and plants colonized afterward, but what really happened? Although it is not feasible to directly collect fossils from Zealandia's seabed, scientists have begun digging into its depths since these are the most valuable and unusual fossils. There are zillions upon zillions of distinct, small, tiny, little fossils that are all distinct from one another and leave a record. Another mystery is how Zealandia is shaped. A geological map of New Zealand shows two characteristics that stand out in particular. One of these is the Alpine Fault, a plate boundary that runs down the South Island and is so important that it can be seen from space. The second is that both New Zealand's geology and that of Hull continent are curiously twisted. As a result of their collision, the Australian and Pacific tectonic plates are split along a horizontal axis. It seems as if someone had snatched the bottom half and wrenched it away at this particular point, since the granite ribbons that were formerly continuous no longer line up and are now almost at right angles. Although it is evident that the tectonic plates moved and twisted them out of the shape, 
The specifics of how and when this happened are still unknown. Although there are various ways to interpret this, there are still many unanswered questions. According to Sutherland, the continent is unlikely to divulge all of its secrets anytime soon since the strata you need to sample are 500 meters or 164 feet below the sea floor and everything is 2 kilometers, 1.2 miles underwater. He claims that coming to conclusions might be difficult. It's really challenging to explore such a vast region. Therefore, it takes a lot of time, money and effort to send ships out to survey regions. Even if nothing else, the discovery of the eighth continent on the globe shows that the scientific knowledge has advanced little in the almost 400 years since Tasman's journey. That's our video for today. We hope you like it. So what are your thoughts about this new underwater discovery? Share all your thoughts with us in the comment section below. Well, that's all for now. This is Big Tech Media. See you again tomorrow. Keep in mind to like, share, and subscribe.